bought this disc stylus kit from Penn State. And I've, I've used these disc stylus before and I really like them. They're a lot more accurate and I use a stylus a lot on my iPad. Take notes and things at work and at church. But this stylus kit has the stylus at one end and a pen at the other. You can see the cross refill here. But there's only one cap and you're either got the cap posted at the stylus end or you've got it protecting the pen end and the other ends always open so I don't want that I just want to make the stylist but I also want to be able to post the cap when I'm using the stylus the cap protects the disc when not in use but I want it out of the way where I don't lose it so what I'm going to do is I'm only going to use the stylus portion of this kit but that also means what am I going to do at the other end so what I'm going to do is the opposite end of where the disc is I'm going to make closed in and then I'm going to taper it down so that while I'm using the stylus the cap will have a friction fit onto the body so we're going to make a closed in stylus tapered to a friction fit. Should be fun. So first of all, we have to determine how deep are we going to drill. And so our tube is going to go to that depth. So I'm only going to drill that deep so that when we insert our tube, that's, that's why, and then the rest of it will be like I said closed in and tapered so first off we can drill but only to that depth okay you can see we drill to the perfect depth we just got just a little bit of trimming to do, so that's good. This tube in, I'll let it set the rest of the day. And then this evening or tomorrow, we'll start our work turning. Okay, in order to turn this closed in here, I've got to make a friction fit chuck. Uh, this tube goes to this blue tape, so I've got to make a chuck that will fit in 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 here, and it'll be just a, a well, I say a chuck. It's a friction fit mandrel, if you will. So I'm just, I've just got a dowel rod here and I'm going to sand on it until we can insert it and it's, and it's real, uh, real snug. I believe that's got it good friction fit. Now I can bring this up to hold it steady. Okay, <clears throat> since we've got the friction chuck here, <clears throat> I don't have a bushing, but the bushing is just under 11 millimeters it's just under 11 millimeters so I'm gonna turn it round to 12 millimeters and then I'll take it down to the size of the bushing okay our friction chuck is working real well I've got it turned round now the plan is this is to turn it down to 12 millimeters just using a wrench as a guide and then, and the bushings are just slightly under 11. <clears throat> Once I get it to 12, then I'll use my calipers, 
marked marked at the dimension of the bushings and I'll turn the outside diameter then down to the to the dimension of the bushings but let me show you how this friction chuck is working You can see it's working real well. I can't get in there because the camera's in the way, so I'm not going to show the whole turn, but I'll come back to you when I've got it down to uh, 11 millimeter. All right, I've got it all turned down to 11 millimeters. Now this is the end that the disc will press into. So this is the end that the bushing would have would have been, and it is my king. It's measuring 417 thousandths, and the bushings measure 416 and a half, so it's as close as you can get it there. <laughs> Not going against bushings, that's just measuring, that's just turning with uh, micrometer and turning tools, or calipers. Now... <coughs> What has to happen is, remember that tube comes, I measured it, that tube comes all the way to here. I'm going to mark that. Or we drilled our hole all the way to there. And this cap, when I'm not using it, I want it to friction fit the last, say, three-eighths of an inch. So this is the end of our tube, so from about right there down, I want to taper that down. The inside diameter of this cap is 7 millimeter. So I've got to taper it down from 11 to 7. I'll come back to you when I've got it to that. Okay, we go from 11 down to 7. Now I'm going to blend it in just a little better right here, but you can see the cap fits on there pretty good with a little friction fit there. That's nice. I need to, I'll smooth this transition up just a little bit right here. And, and then I'll micromesh it. <clears throat> and on the end, where my center was, I went ahead and drilled it out so that I could insert a piece of aluminum dowel here to give it just a little bit of a chrome-looking or aluminum-looking end. So we'll see how that looks. So now I need to just finish the transitions right here and uh, and then I'll micro mesh it and then we'll see what it looks like finished product okay here's our finished stylist and I'm not just overly joyed with it it does what I wanted it to do but I think I'll end up making another one I really messed up this transition down here I, but uh, we'll work on that but it accomplishes what I want. Here's what I was talking about, this disc stylus. I really like these, but I can now post this and then write with it. And you can see, you know, we've got a good friction fit. It won't come off. At least I've got a place to put it where it will not fall off. What really should have happened when we made this? This is all the material I had, so I was limited if you remember right, our blank, our tube came to here, so I only had like, oh, three quarters of an inch to work with, so, and I had to bring the tailstock up to uh, stabilize it so I could turn it, so, which in turn left me a, a dimple at this end, which I filled with an aluminum rod, and that's okay, 
but to be truly closed in that shouldn't happen this blank needed to be oh another three quarter inch or inch longer where the tailstock could have come into here held it tight and then formed it rounded off and cut it off and not had this plus I'd have had more room to for the transition as well so this this profile although it works it it was limited by the fact that uh, my blank was just too short and it's it's a piece that I had left and tried to utilize it and I will I'll use it for a while but I'll replace it eventually with something that that's a little sleeker and will come on out to here so we've got more of a more of a transition if you will but you got the idea on how to turn a, a closed in pin by making a friction chuck and that's one of the things that I wanted to accomplish with you so we appreciate you watching I'm glad you tuned in and until next time be safe